Hello, and welcome to the Money Girl Podcast. My name is Laura Adams. I'm a personal finance expert and author who loves helping you master your money. My mission for this show is to give you practical, actionable tips and advice so you can live rich and love the journey. You can learn more about me on my site at lauradadams.com. In this show, I'll answer a question from Alexandra about a dilemma she's facing with her car. She says, I'm leasing a car that costs $425 per month, and I have 22 months left before the lease expires. But this expense is taking a toll on my budget. I'm underwater, and the dealer suggested getting a loan to purchase the car for $20,000. Is this the best option to get out of my car lease early? Stay with me if you're interested in how leasing a car works, how it compares to buying, and what to do if you need to get out of a car lease before it expires. As always, don't worry about taking notes because I post the transcript for each show on the Money Girl page at quickanddirtytips.com. This is episode number 429 called How Leasing a Car and Getting Out Early Works. Almost a third of all consumers choose car leasing instead of buying one. I joined them this year when I leased my very first car. I got a 2015 Fiat E500. The E stands for electric, and I'm also ecstatic about it because it's really fun to drive, and I never have to pump gas, just charge it at home or while I'm shopping. First, I want to make sure you understand the fundamental difference between buying and leasing a car. When you get an auto loan, you finance the purchase of a vehicle. And with a lease, you finance the use of one over a set period of time. When you purchase a car with a loan, you finance the price of the vehicle, less any down payment that you make. For instance, if you buy a $25,000 car and make a $5,000 down payment, you make up the difference by borrowing $20,000. You can get a car loan from a variety of local or online lenders. And by the way, if you want a list of my recommended low-rate lenders, I created a free one-page PDF download called the Online Loan Comparison Chart. You can get it in the notes for this show or by texting me. Right now, you can text the phrase, my loan, with no space, to the number 33444. Again, my loan. Text that to the number 33444, and I'll send you the online loan comparison chart. Your monthly payments are determined by the interest rate and length of a loan. Let's say Alexandra borrows $20,000 at a 3% APR, or annual percentage rate. If she gets a three-year loan, her monthly payment would be about $580. That wouldn't help her situation because it's more than her current $425 lease payment. But if she got a five-year loan instead, her payment would be close to $300, allowing her to save $125 per month. Now, while that lower payment sounds great, the longer your loan term, the more you pay in interest. Alexandra would pay almost $2,000 in interest over five years, while a three-year loan would only cost about $940 in interest. Plus, longer auto loans make it easier to get upside down where you owe more than the vehicle is worth. That's not a good situation. It means if you want to sell the car or if it gets stolen or totaled in an accident, you might have to pay extra money out of pocket to make up the difference. Some benefits of buying a car are that you can customize it, drive it as much as you want, and even drive it for years after you've paid it off. I've done that with many vehicles that I owned. You can sell it or trade it in for its resale value at any time before or after you pay off the loan. But the main downside is that you're responsible for all major repairs after any warranty that you may have expires. While my example shows that Alexandra could potentially save money by buying the car, she'll be taking a risk that it won't need any expensive repairs before it's paid off. That could easily wipe out the savings she's trying to achieve. On the other hand, when you lease a car, you're actually financing just a portion of the vehicle's price. The portion is the estimated amount of depreciation that you'll use up during the lease term. Let's say you lease a $40,000 car that will be worth $20,000 in three years when your lease expires. This $20,000 in depreciation, less any trade-in or down payment, plus dealer fees, 
is the basis for the calculation of your monthly lease payments. This is why lease payments can be much lower than loan payments for the exact same vehicle. Instead of paying for the entire car, you only pay for the estimated depreciation of the car during the time you lease it. And at the end of the term, you can return the car or purchase it at a depreciated resale value. Leasing can be attractive because you get to drive a newer or high-end vehicle for a lower monthly payment when compared to the cost of buying it for the same price and down payment. Even if you purchase a car using a low or no-interest loan, leasing is usually less expensive in the short term. And as I mentioned, a major advantage of leasing is that you don't have to deal with major repairs because most are covered if you get a lease term that lasts just as long as the manufacturer's warranty. While there are plenty of upsides to leasing, it comes with downsides as well. A biggie is that you're typically charged a mileage fee if you drive more than about 10,000 to 12,000 miles per year. Depending on your work and lifestyle, maintaining low mileage may not be possible. Another huge issue is Alexandra's dilemma. What happens if you need to get out of a car lease early? You might sign a lease in good faith, but then have a financial hardship or a major life change that just doesn't make the car a good fit for you anymore. You could lose your job and have trouble making payments. You might take a new job that requires you to drive more miles and exceed the annual mileage cap. Or you might need a minivan because twins are on the way. If you own a car, none of these issues are a problem because you can sell it or trade it in for a new one, even if you have a loan. But breaking a car lease is much more restrictive and can be expensive. So the first thing you want to do is to review your contract and speak to the dealer so you understand the full cost of breaking a car lease. Here are three options to consider if you need to get out early. Option number one, return the car. Returning the car to the dealer before the end of a lease should be your very last resort. Even if you give it back or ask for a voluntary repossession, you're still on the hook financially. The early termination fees and penalties could be just as much as sticking with the original agreement. If you don't make your lease payments, it will damage your credit, just like defaulting on a car loan would. So I definitely don't recommend this option. If you have to pay for the car, you might as well keep it and use it. Option number two, buy the car. Whether you should buy a car during a lease or at the end of the term depends on the price the dealer offers you. If the vehicle's market value is higher than the price, buying it might be a good idea. But if the car is really worth less than what the dealer asks, it's obviously a bad idea to buy it. And this is what Alexandra means by being underwater. The value of the car is less than what she owes on the lease. So if Alexandra buys the car, it could wipe out all of the savings she hoped for by choosing a lease in the first place. You can research vehicle prices and depreciation rates on sites like TrueCar, AutoTrader, and Edmunds. Okay, back to option number three for what to do if you need to get out of a car lease early. Option number three is transfer your car lease. Transferring your lease is the best option, but it isn't always a slam dunk. It's also called a lease trade or a lease assumption, and it's very affordable and it doesn't hurt your credit. So this is the solution that I recommend for Alexandra. A lease transfer is when one person takes over the payments of a lease vehicle with the approval of the leasing company and assumes all the rights and responsibilities of the original agreement. The person with the lease is called the seller and the person who wants to assume the lease is called the buyer. Sites like leasetrader.com and swapalease.com allow you to advertise your vehicle and lease to prospective buyers. People who wanna get out of a lease are matched with people who wanna take over a lease for the remainder of the term. Lease trade sites walk you through the process and help you legally exit your agreement. When someone wants to take over your lease, you transfer ownership and the new owner makes all the future payments. Lease sellers walk away with no financial penalties. Listing a leased vehicle online doesn't guarantee that you're going to find someone to take it. But there are usually many people in the market for short-term, no-down-payment affordable car leases. 
You can even transfer a car lease to someone who lives in a different state if you or the buyer arrange to have the vehicle delivered by a car carrier service. But you need to be aware that there are some leasing companies that may not allow transfers or may require the seller to retain some liability for the vehicle even after the transfer. For instance, if the buyer doesn't pay their excess mileage charges or a lease end fee, some leasing companies could ask you to pay them. It varies depending on the leasing company, the manufacturer of the vehicle, and the state where you live. Lease trading sites do charge advertising costs and transaction fees associated with doing a transfer. However, it will be much less than buying out your lease and paying an early termination penalty. Plus, the lease buyer typically pays the bulk of the transfer costs. So be sure to find out what's allowed under your existing contract. That's an important tip to consider before you sign a new lease to begin with. If your leasing company allows transfers, you'll have much more flexibility if you need to get out early. Also, remember that the primary factor that determines the cost of a car lease is the depreciation that's expected to happen during the term of the lease. Different makes and models of cars depreciate at different rates. So the best lease deals can potentially be found for models with the lowest depreciation rates. Unless you live in a large metropolitan area with plenty of public transportation or car sharing services, having a vehicle is an expense that most of us have to bear. So what's better, buying or leasing? Well, leasing means having little or no equity with lower payments, and buying means having partial equity with higher payments. Leasing a car is similar to buying in that it's usually a losing proposition, financially speaking. A car depreciates the same amount whether the driver owns it or leases it. While it's possible to come out ahead with some remaining equity in a leased vehicle, you typically don't. If you like the benefits of leasing, it offers a more carefree lifestyle where you don't have the headaches of ownership. That's what I like about it. But if long-term cost savings is your primary objective, then you should buy a car and drive it until the repair costs begin to exceed the cost of replacing it. Once your loan is paid off, keep sending the same amount of money to a savings or retirement account. That's generally the best way to save money, unless you have a good investment plan for the money you could save by leasing. For instance, If you compare the cost of buying versus leasing a car and find that you'd save $200 per month with a lease, consider the opportunity cost. If you invest the $200 savings over 36 months at 8% interest, that could give you over $8,000 by the end of the lease. So what's right for you will depend on your financial situation and your personal preferences. If you can't afford the higher payments of a car loan, consider buying a less expensive model or a reliable used car. Before leasing my Fiat, I always purchase pre-owned cars instead of new ones. But if low monthly payments and the opportunity to drive a new vehicle every few years with little hassle is worth the extra cost for you, leasing is the way to go. Just be sure that you can live with the limitations on mileage and have enough income or emergency savings to afford the lease for the entire term. If you're looking for resources and tools that I recommend for just about every area of your financial life, check out my tools page at lauradadams.com. And to keep the money conversation going, join my private Facebook group called Dominate Your Dollars. It's filled with like-minded people who are reaching for and accomplishing big financial goals, just like you. To request your invitation, visit Dominate Your Dollars on Facebook or send me a text message for immediate access. Just text the word dollars to the number 33444. I hope to see you in the group. Thanks so much for listening. That's all for now. I'll talk to you next week, courtesy of Money Girl, your guide to a richer life. 